sound strange, but I've never used thought files. This year alone, I've set up three PCs, both for work and personal use. I actually prefer starting fresh with each new computer. It gives me a clean slate to install only the essential tools without carrying over any clutter from my previous setups. But here's the thing, after spending about 6 hours setting up my third machine for this year, I decided I didn't want to do this manually anymore. In my past videos, I've mentioned that I used to stick to the default Mac terminal because it just worked. I prefer focusing on writing code and getting work done rather than tweaking tools and settings. But after creating my M3 Pro MacBook productivity setup video, I realized something. If I invest that much time building the perfect development environment, why start from scratch with each new computer? In this video, I'll walk you through my journey of researching and building a robust dot file system that I can use for future PC setups. If you're new to dot files, you'll know what they are by the end of this video. If you're already familiar with them, maybe you'll discover some ways to improve your current setup, allowing you to spin up your entire development environment in just a few steps. So what are .files exactly? .files are just plain text config files like .zish or .git config and so on. They control how your tools behave and the promise is really compelling. With one script, you can basically install configure and customize all tools required for your computer. And since they're just files, you can version them with Git and sync them across different devices. There are more advanced workflows for this, but we'll start really, really basic. I started by studying popular .files repositories on GitHub. I looked at everything from minimal setups to incredibly complex setups with hundreds of configurations. What I discovered was honestly a bit overwhelming. The complexity spectrum is wild, everyone's workflow is different and the rabbit hole is really deep. What works for a backend engineer might not work for a frontend engineer. This made me realize I needed to be intentional about what I actually wanted. So I took a step back and asked myself, what do I actually want to achieve here? My goals became clearer. First, I wanted to automate the installation of residential tools I use daily. Then, I also wanted to set up Git configurations consistently and configure my terminal with useful aliases and functions. Then lastly, I wanted to make this whole process reproducible and simple. I created a simple bash script that handles setting up my new environment. From homebrew installation to Node.js, Python, and even VS Code extensions. Basically stuff I would install manually on new machines. Next, I needed to copy over my current dot files from my root directory to a dot files directory. I'm doing this so I can save them to source control and use them to restore my configuration whenever I set up a new computer. And of course, I wrote a bash script for this to avoid doing it manually every time. Now that I moved to a different folder, I expect every tool that depends on them to break. So I symlinked them to the previous directory so they can still be found with the apps that use them. This is like the most basic concept of dot files. The last step was syncing to source control. This is where I needed to exercise some judgment on the kind of dot files I wanted to sync. Some might be too heavy and unnecessary, containing cached files, while others can be sensitive like .ssh or .aws files, so you have to pick and choose carefully. I went further to add a .gitignore file to the repository. So now, whenever I have a new PC, I can just clone the repository and it will install my CLI tools, my favorite apps, and set up directories for organizing files, and also VS Code extension and sync the dot .files. Initially, I thought this was a game of having the coolest dot .files set up, but it was more about creating a practical maintainable system that actually improved my workflow. The real game changer wasn't the automation itself, it was the mindset shift from I don't need this to this actually makes my work better. It was more about respecting my own time and creating systems that let me focus on what actually mattered, building great software. So if you're in my shoes and you needed to create your own dot files, I would say start simple and focus on your actual workflow, not what looks cool online. And remember, the best dot file setup is the one that works best for you. If this video changed your mind about your dot file setup, do well to like this video and subscribe for more content like this. Thank you for watching and see you in my next video.